If you're looking to take your motion graphic animations to the next level, you've come to the right place. Today we're diving into 25 tips, tricks, and secrets for mastering animations in DaVinci Resolve Fusion. Using animations allows us to create dynamic experiences, capture users' attention, and highlight important content. To create animations, we just need to change the value of a property over time. This could be the size, rotation, opacity, and even position. There's a lot of different things we can animate. I'm gonna move quick in this video. There's a lot that I wanna cover. Um, probably a lot of these could even be their own dedicated video with a lot more detail. Um, if you're interested in learning more about any of these, please let me know down in the comments below. If you like this video and wanna learn more about DaVinci Resolve Fusion, making animations, um, comment below, like the video, and subscribe to my channel. I'd love to hear what you think. There's so many ways to animate in Fusion, but by using a few simple tips, tricks, and secrets, it's gonna be a lot faster and easier. Okay, I don't know if any of these are really secret, but if you haven't used them very much, it's new to you, so we'll call it a secret. We're gonna start with a few of the basics, and then we're gonna dive into some of the things that I used that uh, make it a lot easier for me navigating and building animations in Fusion. Let's dive in and start making some animation magic. This is an animation video, so we're gonna start with a few keyframe basics and some strategies you can use to make them a little bit easier and faster to set up. Keyframes allow you to set the value of a property at a specific point in time. In Fusion, time is based in frames. To select a frame, just click in this little bar here. On the right-hand side, this is the current frame number. We're gonna set up a simple text animation. We have a text node, a transform node, and that's sitting on top of a background going to a media out. So we're gonna use the transform to adjust the size of the text. And we're gonna animate the size. Select a frame, and go to the inspector and look at the size, and check the keyframe box. That's gonna keyframe the size. Go to another frame, and we're gonna adjust the size, we're gonna bring it back down. And you notice that it automatically created another keyframe. With the keyframes, Fusion is gonna automatically transition between the two values. To reset the keyframes, all you need to do is double click on the property and that'll clear everything. In the timeline bar, you get a little tick mark next to each of the keyframes so that they're easy to find. So we're gonna set a zoom animation where it's gonna start small and get big. To make things easier, set the final value first. And we're gonna put it at one. Try setting your keyframes before adjusting value. So we're gonna to go to frame zero, Keyframe the size by clicking the little diamond. Go to frame 16, keyframe the size, and we can click this arrow to go back to the first frame and bring the size down. And if you're not sure, don't worry about the timing. That can slow you down. You can always go back and change it later. Okay, so how can we make this animation look better, more natural? We can just add some acceleration and deceleration. Think about like a car. When a car starts out, it doesn't start out at full speed. It gradually speeds up, gets to full speed, and then gradually decelerates. We can use the spline editor to add the acceleration and deceleration to our animation. To open the spline editor, click the spline tab at the top right, and you may need to stretch it out a bit, and you can click this icon up here to bring the inspector up so we can see more of the spline editor. Select the node with the keyframes, we'll click transform, and check size to change the spline for the size. Click this icon to zoom into all the points, and to change the points, we're gonna need to select them. So you can either drag and select them like this, or you can click the select all option down here. Once the points are selected, you can take these and drag them around to change the curve. Or you can select both points and click the curve option right here or hit uh, F on the keyboard. This curve represents the rate of change. So we could click this point and bring this down. We click the point and adjust this handle here. And you'll see that it's going to go up very slowly and at the very end it's going to speed up until it gets to the final spot. One of the most powerful things about the keyframe editor is it allows you to set what happens after your animation and adjust the keyframes. So we can select all the keyframes, we can flip the animation, we can repeat it. You see the curve down there? We can loop it, it'll bounce back and forth. And we can also use the set relative, which is just gonna take the keyframes and continue them on at the same rate of change. We made our animations look a little bit better by adding some acceleration and deceleration but we can also add a little bit of anticipation and reaction to take them to the next level. So what does this mean? Well, if, I'm, if you're getting ready to throw a ball, you don't just throw the ball, ball, you kind of bring it back a little bit and then you throw it. Same thing, if, uh, same thing with the car. When you're driving in the car, the car stops, you kind of rock forward and then you come back. So our animation ends on frame 16, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a little bit of the reaction. So when something's moving, it's gotta go a little bit past that point and rock back. So let's do, add this to the animation. So we're gonna go back two frames to frame 14, and we're gonna bring this up a little bit above one. See down here in the spline editor that our point's gonna come up above that resting point and then bounce back to it. Just a little bit, adds a little bit of reaction. Let's, let's have another animation going out. So we're gonna go to, uh, say, frame 44. We're gonna put a keyframe here. We're gonna go over 
a few frames and bump up the size a little bit. This is going to be our anticipation. And then we're going to have it zoom back out. Go to the keyframe editor and we're just going to flatten these out. Not going to worry about the curve too much. And here's what we have. Make this go up a little bit more. And we're going to have it go all the way out. Now that the basic animation is set up, let's go in and adjust some timing. This, there's a lot of different ways to do this. We're going to use a spline editor as well as the keyframe editor. Um, let's get started. So we're going to click this option to see all our points. To change an individual point, you just click on it. You hold the Shift key, and you can drag it around without having to worry about moving it up and down. If you want to adjust the timing of the entire animation, we can hit the Select All option, and then click Time Stretch. That's going to stretch it longer and shorter. Select all. We can also use this box here, and that's going to allow us to not only time stretch it, but adjust the values as well, up and down. In addition to the spline editor, you can also use the keyframe editor to adjust values. Um, and sometimes the keyframe editor is a lot easier to use, especially if you're adjusting a lot of values at the same time. Um, it gets a lot less confusing if you're really only going to adjust the timing. So we're going to uncheck the spline editor, and let's go to keyframe editor. And you'll see it has transform, because that's the transform node is selected. Okay, click show all. And you can take these and adjust them the same way you would. So if we wanted the anticipation to be a little bit longer and that to go down, we can do that or stretch it out a bit. And you can also take all of these and shift them all at the same time. So if you want to shift a whole set of things, you just click on the bar and slide it. And that's going to shift when the first frame starts and the last one ends. The next concept I want you to think about is sometimes just a little bit goes a long way. What I mean by this is you can over animate things. If there's too big of a change on the screen, things can be difficult to read and not quite as pleasing as the little subtle animations. Maybe just a little bit of motion will work a lot better for you. Let's click on this point here, and this is the point where the resolve text pops back. If we crank this up way too much, and the same thing with the other side over here, it can be just a little bit too jarring, and sometimes it's harder to read. So just something to think about. Segmenting your animation into nodes that do just one part of the animation can make it a lot easier to control, especially when it gets really complex. We're going to add a fade in right here. To do this, I'm going to use a brightness contrast node. I'm going to take that and drag it right into the node tree, right between the transform. And you can check the A box to affect the alpha. And we're going to be able to use the gain to do a fade in. OK, now we want to set up some keyframing to fade the text in as the animation goes. But We've lost the ability to see the keyframes in the timeline, in the keyframe bar here. What you can do is select multiple nodes at the same time. So we're going to select the transform and brightness contrast, and we get all the keyframes for both of these nodes. Now we can go to the brightness contrast in the inspector, and we can bring it down, and we can know where the animation finishes. So we're going to take it to zero, set the gain, and we're going to have it come to full opacity right here when it bumps up. So we're going to take the gain and bring it to 1. And we can also see the out animation. So we're, we know that it's going to be right here. I'm going to start fading it out like right in here. And then complete the fade out when it gets to that point. Because both of the nodes are selected, it makes it a lot easier to see all the keyframes for both so we know where we want them to be set. So while you're animating, you're going to be starting, stopping, and trying things out and making adjustments and changing all your settings. So we're going to use the loop replay feature to make this a lot easier. You'll see that um, right down here, we have frame 0 to 119. This is the render range of where the animation is going to be. So you can see right here, if we wanted to just look at the beginning part of this animation, we can set it to 0. And I'm just clicking and dragging on this. And you'll have we have this loop button right here, which is the red, circle, the, the red arrow looping on itself. When we hit play, the animation is just going to repeat this one part. So let's say we wanted to move this around. We can add a transform node after the brightness contrast while it's animating and play with the position. Maybe we'll move it over here, make it a little bit smaller, and adjust the angle. It's a really convenient way to adjust your animation while it's being played, and you're really focusing in on just one part that you want to dial in and get it right. This also works with the keyframe editor. Let's select the transform node, and we're going to expand this, look at the size. If we wanted to change these frames, we could move this out a little bit to slow it down or move it in. So we're actually adjusting the keyframes while it's playing. You can also set the render range by hitting the control key and dragging in the frame bar up here to set the in and outs for the playback. Another super powerful concept is to reuse the animation. So we've already set up all the keyframes. And if there's other things that we want to animate with a similar sequence, we can copy and paste and reuse it. So let's take the transform and the brightness contrast. We're going to copy it and we're going to paste it. 
We'll take the text and bring it into the transform and the output of the copied brightness contrast and put it into the merge. And we can use a transform node to adjust where this one is and change the angle. And we're able to reuse that part of the animation. We're using the animation, but if we want to retime it or make any adjustments, it can be really tricky because there's a lot going on, especially if you have a lot of nodes here. So I'm going to show you how to use animation groups. I'm going to take the transform brightness contrast, transform brightness contrast, hit control G. So this is going to create a group and we're going to hit control C to copy it. We're going to paste the group and we're going to make two copies here and merge them in. I'm bringing the text into each group and we're going to use a transform node to just shift them around so that we can see where they're at. So right now they're all animating with the same timing. If we wanted to adjust the timing, all we need to do is select the groups and we'll go to the keyframe editor. And with all everything collapsed, you can take each group and just shift it. So if you wanted um, this group to, have to start animating a little bit later, you just slide it out. And there we have, we have three, we have different timings for each of the groups. So you're able to adjust the timing for the entire group without having to go in and mess with all of the individual keyframes. If you know exactly what you want and you're really detailed, try the keyframe table. Go into the keyframe editor and select a property. So let's set, select size and hit this little option down here for the keyframe table. It shows the keyframe and the value. So if we wanted to adjust the value at frame 12, you double click on it and we can set it to 1.5 and hit enter. If you wanted to add a keyframe, you can click over here and we'll say at frame 60, hit enter, and we want the value to be two. Just a real quick way to get the exact value for each keyframe. Um, I'm a huge fan of keyboard shortcuts. They're really a lot faster. They get really natural and you don't even really have to think about it after a while. Um, so let's open up one of these groups and hit transform one. And you see all the tick marks. If you want to go between each of those, you could click on them. You could drag around. You could hit this little arrow here, or you could hit the alt key and use the left and right bracket. And that'll navigate the animation really quickly between each of these keyframe points. Keyboard shortcuts, give them a try. Don't forget about Motion blur, that's something that's going to make things look more natural because right there, motion blur. We see it all the time. We see it in real life. So add it to your animations to make them look, look a little bit better. In the transform node, go to the settings and enable motion blur. Adjust the settings to your liking. Um, let's work on synchronizing what's going on with the animation with your timeline. There's a lot of times where you're going to want to do this. So we're going to take the background and we're going to take the alpha and bring it all the way down. Let's go to the timeline. We have the animation, our resolve animation, sitting on top of a clip of a car that's driving around. Okay, first let's use marker. So we're gonna go and we're gonna set a marker right here. Make sure that nothing is selected and in the timeline, hit the M key. And that's gonna set a marker and we're gonna bring one over here and we're gonna set another marker, hit M. And we'll set, uh, we'll, go, well, we'll set one right here too. So we got three markers. So we're gonna wanna line up our animations with each of those markers. Let's get back into Fusion. And now we have our markers in there. So let's select our groups. Let's take each of our groups and align them with the markers. So we're adjusting the animation to match what's going on with the clip underneath. The resolve pops in right where each of those markers is. Okay, that works great for timing, but what if you wanted to see what's going on in the video underneath so that you can pos position something exactly where you want it? Well, let's get back into Fusion and this background node, this was the background color. We're gonna get rid of this. We're gonna add a media in node. Click in the node area, hit control space and search for media in and add that. And we're gonna take the media in and drag it right into our merge. Um, you notice we've got an error here, it's red. All we need to do is go to the media source and we're gonna set it to background. And there you go, we can see the background, the background clip that we're building the animation on top of. And we could use this with these transforms to move things around exactly where we want them. We can also animate with modifiers. Any of the properties, you can right click on it and see some of the different things you can do. So let's. Let's add another transform node. Let's select transform three, right click on the center. You'll see that we can modify with a perturb, which will move it around, or we can even do a shake. And to adjust the settings, you click the modifiers tab and you can adjust the speed, minimum, and maximum, and really customize your shake effect. If you want to have a property change throughout the entire animation, you can right click, say let's right click on size and we can modify with anim curves. Um, click the modifiers and you can adjust the settings in here. If you look at the property here, the size property, you'll see it's gonna get bigger throughout the animation. The uh, anim curves will automatically do that and adjust the timing to the length of the animation. If you wanna move something in a straight line, try the vector result modifier. Right click on a property, a position property, modify with and choose vector result. And then click modifiers right up here. And this is gonna allow you to set the distance. You see we're sliding it back and forth as well as an angle. So you can adjust the angle that it moves at.
Okay, what if we want to move something on a path with all kinds of crazy directions? Right click on the center position property and choose path. And all you need to do is make sure you have this plus icon selected to build the path. Um, make sure you're in control mode. Right click and choose options and show controls. And now we can click in here and start building our path. We can use the options to edit the path. Select all the points and we'll smooth them out. And we'll add a point right here and drag it in. So the text is now going to be moving along that path. We'll go to modifiers and you'll see that we have a displacement. Let's uncheck this little option here for the keyframe and we can slide the text along the path that we just created. Okay, let's talk about controlling the timing of the animation using the time speed node. This allows us to do a freeze frame, speed it up, slow it down, and even reverse the animation. With transform three select to take control space and search for time speed. And it's not gonna do anything yet, but if we set the speed to zero, that's really gonna do a freeze frame. And then we're gonna adjust the delay and that's gonna be the frame that is being held on. So we're gonna say 30. So there's a 30 frame delay. Um, if we want to uh, speed it up just a little bit, if we want it to go half time, we do 0.5 for the speed and the animation is gonna go slower. If we wanna reverse the animation, we set the speed to negative one. And that means it's gonna start at the end and go backwards. If you've done much fusion, you know that it can really slow your computer down. Once you have everything set up, try using loaders and savers to re-render the animation and then reuse that rendered animation in another place. So all you need to do is right click in the node area, hit control space and search for saver. And we're gonna take our animation and bring it into the saver. Click browse to give it a folder to save your animation. Click fusion, render all savers. And this is gonna pre-render our animation for us. That generated all the files. So now we just need to load them back in. We're gonna disconnect everything here and we can actually delete it if we wanted to. We don't need any of this anymore because it's been rendered. So let's hit control space and search for loader. And it's gonna ask us for our folder. We select one of the files in that folder. This uh, is just the text animation. So we can take it, we can take the text animation through the loader and merge it in. And let's take a look. And we have the exact same animation that's being loaded in um, that's pre-rendered and it can run a lot faster. Loaders and savers are helpful, but I use render in place all the time. Um, that's my best friend for boosting my performance. So let's go to the timeline. If we want this fusion animation to be pre-rendered, all we need to do is right click on it, choose render in place, select your format and hit render. Choose your folder. This is gonna create a video clip for the animation that makes it go really, really fast. Last animation trick, bonus tip, expressions. Um, they're really powerful and can save you a lot of steps. They're very useful for having things go with the same value or even making animations that are relative to one another. Let's set up a real quick text animation. We got a transform. I'm gonna set it up to ping pong. I'm gonna add another transform node, bring the text into the transform and merge that in. So we're gonna have, we're gonna have two texts on the screen and bring this one down a little bit. So if we want to reuse that first animation, we can go to the transform two, right click on size and choose expression. And this is going to be a field down here where you can put an equation, a formula, or a reference to another property. We're going to say transform one dot size. So basically whatever is in transform one dot size, transform two is going to have that same property. So they're going to be animating with the exact same values. If you wanted to reverse it, we could do one minus transform one dot size. And all of a sudden we kind of have a reverse animation going. So real quickly, you can have two properties that are animating relative or within certain values in relation to each other. All right, those are my animation power-ups for today. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. Maybe you learned a little bit of something and got some ideas on how to make your animations better, maybe a little bit easier. Um, also, if there's anything that you'd like more information on, maybe you need to dive a little bit deeper, uh, comment below and let me know. Thanks so much for watching. I hope there was a little bit in this video that can help you out with some of your animations. Um, I really appreciate everyone's support. Comment below, subscribe, like the video. And I will talk to you guys soon. Thank you.